Gentlemen, boys and girls, for those who don't watch TV or read newspapers, I'm Andrew Johnston and it's my privilege to have been asked to host today's event. We are here to enjoy some wonderful music in what can only be described as a fantastic location and it's perfect weather. The program is light-hearted and should appeal to everyone, so let those feet tap and join in if you can. We have an orchestra made up of 70 musicians and judging by the sound they made in rehearsals, this is one concert that you will remember for a long time to come. We begin with two extracts from Dancery by the 16th century Flemish composer Tilman Sassato. So please welcome Cumbria's young musicians and their conductor, Tim Redmond. We turn now to music by one of the 20th century's greatest British composers. Malcolm Arnold was one of those really annoying people who was good at everything. He started off his life as a trumpet player in the London Philharmonic Orchestra before leaving to turn to being a full-time composer. And he wrote for every genre, nine symphonies, numerous concertos, ballets, operas, and a great deal of film music. You'll all know the most famous of them all, the bridge over the river Kwai. That was his score. And what we're going to play you now is not film music, but it's music very much in that style. For over 50 years, these two pieces that we're going to play from now have inspired and introduced young people to orchestral play. Two little suites, in fact. We're going to start with the march from the first suite, and then I'm going to introduce the next two movements, if only because, on a windy day like today, everything that we're playing is being pegged to the music stand, and it takes half an hour to swap. So I'll tell you about the next two movements in a minute. Here's a march from Malcolm Arnold's first little suite. <laughs>
I should say that Malcolm Arnold very cleverly conceived these works to be performed by nearly any combination of instruments, as long as you had some strings and some wind and some brass. But we've spotted a flaw in his orchestration. We're going to do two movements now, an overture and a dance from the second suite. And the dance requires three percussion. We have two. They're excellent, but they only have two arms each. We could do nothing about it. And so, the sound of the suspended cymbal, ladies and gentlemen, will be provided by the rest of the orchestra. So if you can't quite work out what that mysterious noise is, that's the orchestra singing the cymbal part. <laughs> Since appearing on Britain's Got Talent, I have been amazed by how often I get stopped in the street or supermarket. Not always, not always easy to accept, but something that goes with the territory. Having experienced a slice of fame, I'm now much more understanding as to why airless celebs avoid the endless camera crews and photographers. There is one man that I very much admire, and if you turn your head slightly, squint your eyes, and only look when it's dark, I have a slight resemblance to James Bond. <laughs> Just agree with me. For me, the ultimate James Bond was Roger Moore, and I simply love the 1981 film For Your Eyes Only. This was Roger's fifth Bond film, but the twelfth James Bond film made, and easily one of the best. The title song was composed by the wonderful Bill Conti, who often conducts at the Academy Awards. He also composed the theme tunes for Cagney and Lacey, the Colbys and Falcon Crest. So grab your white tuxedo, hold the bomb position, and remember the name, Bond, James Bond. <laughs> 